Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at off-field landings. Now usually when people think off-field landings, they're typically considering the situation where you have accidentally lost an engine, you're going to have to stick it down in the woods somewhere. We're not actually going to be doing that today. So what we're going to be doing is intentional off-field landings. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, uh, we're flying the Cessna 170 today. You're probably like, oh, this is an interesting uh, aircraft to pull out for this. What well, actually makes a lot of sense for us. And the reason for that is because, as you probably noticed in the little intro there, that we have these giant, big, squishy Tundra tires. Now, normally those big tires are designed to basically make it so that we can safely land in snow. But in our particular case, uh, we're actually going to be taking advantage of them to make it a little bit safer to go ahead and land somewhere other than the runway itself. Now, there's a bunch of different challenges you're going to be facing uh, when you're attempting to land in a place that you're really not normally going to land. Uh, the simplest one, of course, is going to be, do we have enough ground underneath us to be able to safely get down? So uh, one thing we have to imagine there is, uh, let's say we pick a spot, it looks pretty flat, you know, I'm feeling like that's going to be a good place to land, kind of a thing like that. Um, do we know we have enough room to do it? You know, the big thing with a lot of these off-field landings, too, is you're not going to have the luxury of something that's necessarily flat. You're probably not going to have the luxury of something that's unnecessarily smooth. And usually it's also not going to be a hard surface. So when you put all those factors together, whatever your typical landing distance is on the ground, even if you're really, really good, is probably going to be multiplied by a pretty significant factor in order to do that. So let's go ahead and uh, start looking around for some possibilities for our landing site here. Now remember, we always have to take into account the position of the wind. Now this aircraft especially is super fun because of the fact that I am a conventional landing gear plane, which makes makes these things fun. Now, bush pilots will often tell you that some of the better places to go ahead and find a place to land is usually along a stream bed because it typically is a little bit flatter there. You know, one thing that you'll see is uh, when we pick a position to land on is not only are we going to get the distance, we have to remember we have to get airborne again. So we have to make sure we have plenty of room. Now, for this exercise today, I've taken us to the middle of the rainforest because I figured this would be the most challenging place to find something nice and soft to set us down on. Now, I'm looking down here right now, and I can see that there seems to be a pretty wide field right there. So if you remember way back in your pilot training days, uh, like I do myself sometimes, is we have these lovely things called point turns. So when we initially pick a spot that seems interesting to us, that um, it's like, you know, that looks like it's going to be the spot that we want to land on. We want to go ahead and inspect that particular site visually. Now there's usually a couple different parts to this process. Uh, usually what I like to do is do an initial kind of flyby to see if there's anything incredibly obvious. Obviously the biggest thing to me is that little patch of trees right in the middle, which means we have to come in on that side. The next thing we like to do is we like to try to predict where things that are not going to be obvious are. So in this particular case, as I'm flying, um, what could possibly be wrong here? I notice there's a pretty strong body of water uh, directly below me there, which probably means that the ground there is going to be a little on the soft side. Now I'm arranging myself so that I can go ahead and fly into the wind that I'm going to be approaching at here. I'm going to get this thing out kind of unstable. Looks pretty good to me. Awesome. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a low pass on the site. Now the goal of the low pass here is not to put the plane on the ground. The goal is to identify any other obstacles that maybe we didn't see in our initial kind of spin here. The other advantage to this is it's going to allow us to predict how much time we're going to need in order to safely cover that distance. I'm going to take my little left turn here. I've got to go lose a little bit of altitude. Obviously, the big danger in my mind here is going to be birds more than anything. So we'll go ahead and reduce that power. And now we're just going to go ahead and uh, pause in just a second, and I'll show you exactly how to make this calculation. All right, go a little bit lower again. We're just inspecting to see if there's anything that's going to surprise us. And go ahead and pause. All right, so this is the important part. Um, we're going to be looking for anything else that maybe we didn't see on our initial pass here. And again, these are controlled, and I have big squishy wheels, so it's, it's going to be very tolerant of this. The other thing, like I mentioned a moment ago, is we need to figure out how much of this ground we're actually going to need to land. Now, what I usually recommend people do is uh, they fly over at a set speed and they basically calculate how far it is. Now for us on a grass to be safe, we're going to need about 2,000 feet. So that's actually fairly challenging. Let me show you why. So if you take a look at my quick back of the envelope calculation here, you'll notice that 60 knots, which is our current airspeed, keep in mind wind modifies this, is the equivalent of 101 feet per second. That means if I need to determine that I have 2,000 available feet, we're going to have to multiply this by 20, which means I need 20 seconds to go ahead and cover that entire distance to know that I actually have it. So another way to think about this too is if I take my total feet that I need, say it's 2,000 feet, divide that by my current feet per second, 
that's going to let me know how many seconds of that speed I'm going to require to be able to safely cover that distance. So as you can see, that's a pretty significant amount of time. So we're going to have to time that very, very carefully when we get back over to the flight simulator itself. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll reduce my power here. Again, I'm cheating because I can pause. <laughs> if I didn't pause, uh, again, we'd have a kind of a different situation here. I'm just going to kind of bleed off that speed. I love the fact that when you do these kind of things, you can cheat a little bit like this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll drop my flaps. Go ahead and put the speed up again. But unpause. Right, I got about 16 Mississippis there. Uh, 16 Mississippis tells me I do not have the 2,000 feet required in order to execute a safe landing in that particular spot. Now, let's say we we're going to ignore that 2,000 feet and say, well, uh, well I don't care. I, I don't care if I get back in the air. Maybe I'm having some engine trouble. It's an urgency. I, or I'm just going to skip this step and do it anyway. Well, let's see what happens. So now that we've established that we have the correct distance, which we don't, uh, we are short quite substantially, actually, um, we're going to go ahead and execute our landing. Now, when we're landing on this, um, there's a lot of problems we're going to be facing. Now, one thing is, unlike a runway, it is not going to be terribly even. So when we do kind of set ourselves up to be able to go pop down on it, you're going to find that that lovely ground, which looked fine a moment ago, is actually a, quite a mess. So go ahead and pick that distance up. You can see that we're making a bit of a left downwind here. All right, looks pretty good. Go ahead, take a look. Again, we're going to make sure we're into the wind. We've checked, we've confirmed, we've made a bunch of noise. Any creatures, of course, when we fly over at low altitude, tend to uh, kind of take cover and run off to the woods. Hopefully, keep in mind, if we have an emergency creature, it's going to be an emergency for us, too. So now the approach is going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and get ourselves into the white arc here. Go ahead and swing into my left base. Our approach now has to be done at a slightly different level. Uh, the most important thing for us is the abort. We have to never put ourselves in a position where we can't cancel the landing. That includes both that initial approach as well as uh, when you actually stick on the ground itself. So if we do something like load the plane very, very, very aggressively, and you know we try to pop those flaps up or something like that, it could have a massive impact on the safety of the landing and approach. Remember too that we're gonna be coming a little on the slow side here. You're probably gonna hear the stall every once in a while. It's just me and the plane today. So we'll be able to get nice and slow. All right. Now, remember that 2,000 feet I was warning you about, and I said that we're probably going to need it. Do you see how that 2,000, that 1,600 feet suddenly seems a lot scarier when you're in the final approach here? So we're going to go ahead and make our approach as normal. I'm going to go ahead and cut. So remember, we can do a little bit of a slip here. I'm going to slip just a bit. Bring us down. And now remember, you're landing not on soft ground. A go around. Nope. Nope. Now notice did not force the plane. And that is one of the most important concepts of this, is you really, really do not want to get yourself in a chance where you cannot go. So now what I'll do is I'll go find something a little bit longer. Now, the area in front of us looks to be a very tempting possibility because we have a couple different items here. Uh, the first one, of course, is um, I can see the fact that there's a road there. Uh, that's usually a pretty safe bet that somebody's not been operating in this area. But the thing I also see is I see the fact there's these gigantic swamps and little ponds everywhere. Uh, that's going to tell us in the real world, of course, that if we try to sit down on any of that, we're immediately going to get... <laughs> <laughs> and that'll be the sound effect and they'll never see us again so one of the things is, is even though in the simulator we can get away with some of this we might not be able to get away with this in the real world just because of that fact but i am noticing there's a lot of roads here that usually means that the ground is probably going to be dry enough for our particular approach and i can actually see a little spot there where it looks like uh, somebody tried to cultivate someone i know that's probably a kind of a graphical anomaly more than it is anything but at the very least it gives us a little bit of potential so i'm looking in there right now and i see that pretty soft spot again i don't see anything we're a bit of an incline there so it's going to be kind of dangerous for us but it's also got again a little bit of a scrape there so let's go ahead and line ourselves up now what i've already done is i've already run through and i've checked the amount of time that it's going to take us to cross that distance uh, we'll go ahead and take our plane into our nice little gentle turn here obviously i uh, don't stall <laughs> that'd be very embarrassing on our part and we're going to come right around here and I know you're probably saying, oh, let's uh, line ourselves up and uh, bring ourselves down for the landing here. But believe it or not, we are way too fast and way too high to be able to safely execute that landing there. So what I'm going to do is continue coming around. I actually got to bring in a little bit of power. Make sure when you're doing dumb things like this that uh, you go ahead and keep the aircraft as coordinated as possible. Otherwise, uh, you'll find that you run out of altitude suddenly and you spin and crash and die. All right, looks good. Resist the urge to pull back aggressively. Like I said, we're trying to lose altitude here. 
See how little drag this aircraft has? That is uh, staggering, absolutely staggering. And there is our new position there. I'm gonna go ahead and put us in a slip immediately. And we're just gonna come nice and down to the ground here. So one of the things we're gonna have to face now, like I was saying, is we're also conventional landing gear aircraft, which means as we're coming in for this approach, and yes, my throttle's at zero and I still have plenty of speed. We've got to remember we can now tip the plane on its side, which can cause a lot of issues. So again, at any point we can change our minds here. That looks pretty good. Okay, we're gonna hold the plane. We wanna give it just a little bit of power at the end. Whoop, a little bit of that. Again, you're gonna have to keep flying the plane because unfortunately, like I was mentioning, we're on very soft ground and you're gonna apply the brakes at minimum force. Watch out for little bumps because the plane is gonna be all over the place here. And we're just gonna hold that nose back nice and hard, nice and hard. You don't want any chances of this thing toppling over. Otherwise, we're not going back to base. And you can see we made ourselves onto the ground. Woo! <laughs> I am glad we chose this spot to land versus that other one. We would have crashed. So as you can see, the basics there is uh, confirming that you do have the wind. It's confirming that the location that you're arriving at is going to be uh, good enough to land on. And of course, it's uh, when you do execute the landing, remember, you can always go around. Enjoy.